name is Sanji Johnson Anderson, and I am chilling <laughs> in Susan's garden. Like a villain. <laughs> but let's hear, let's hear from you, Sanji. What your, um, well, how how you came to hang out with Gross of the Waters? It's interesting how things come together because after I left uh, UMass um, and tr and and tried to find. Uh, a path forward that I knew in my heart was not a path that was going to take me to the conventional of um, trying to find a, a job in academia. Um, I wasn't quite sure what that path was going to be and Susan was one of the people with whom I would talk every week trying to sort my head out and to find mm -hmm. a path so it's it's kind of a, a, a full circle moment that mm -hmm. we are indeed here <laughs> and and then i had always had a relationship with ingrid mm -hmm. a friendship with ingrid and again ing and i started to talk um you know i would go by her with my <laughs> trying to figure out <laughs> a way forward and um but I've always known of her work mm -hmm. in uh, in South Africa and the fact that she had been here, not been able to go back because of COVID. Like we know everything was shut down with COVID. And um, so it, it's I, I, I take that route of explaining my place because it, it has come about sort of so organically um, where I am now. You know, Ingrid didn't set out to recruit me. Um, it, it it sort of fell naturally into place mm. um and uh and and where i see myself uh making a contribution mm. to crossing the waters as an educator that is my background i have been a teacher for uh many years i've i've, I've been a teacher since i was 20 mm. years old and mm -hmm. i will not tell you my age now <laughs> <laughs> but um so that has always been my passion and i've mm. always wanted to serve and i've always wanted to serve in a way that is most useful mm. and 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 to hear of the work and to know of the work my own son uh josh was a was a, was a participant in the youth ambassadors program of crossing the waters and um I wanted a, a, a place where I could bring my skill set, my knowledge, my experience, mm. my spirit yes. uh, uh, to it, to crossing the waters. I, I felt like crossing the waters was a place yes. that I could do that. Absolutely. And I really wanted to have an opportunity to work with young people and to connect with the community and to do community engagement and the performance and the arts and, yeah. and crossing the waters just has presented like opportunities and openings for for for, for all of that um, it is sort of the essence of the work mm -hmm. that Ing has done uh, with Amai and and all the other amazing mm. yeah. uh, artists and professionals that she's worked with over the years and I wanted to use my experience as an educator and my education as an educator to 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 bolster this work and to, um, you know, from, from a scholarship perspective, right. to look at the work that mm -hmm. uh, Crossing the Waters is doing and mm -hmm. to, to, to make sure that it is noted and noted mm -hmm. in, in the academy, mm -hmm. you know, uh, mm -hmm. that people know of it and that that is one other way that we are making, staking our place right. in terms of what this work means. Right. And so um, one of the things that I uh, will be doing with the young people in uh, South Africa once I go, um, is to work, uh, as, as Amaya said, to train the trainers. Mm. Um, I'm a teacher educator. Right. And so um, I want to be working with those young people who will be yeah. training those children, who will be mentoring them, uh, because I come with considerable experience uh, from that perspective so that the engagement that happens mm. is meaningful engagement right. not that it hasn't been but that will add another dimension mm -hmm. to um 
what 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 Ingrid and all these amazing artists have done uh, with these creative and brilliant young people, and that's what I you know wanted. So I see everything from through the lens of education, not 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 necessarily school classroom, but but learning, uh, expanding, uh, understanding and knowledge for one's own personal for growth for people and so um everything that we do everything every activity uh that 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 they embark on um i would like to engage it from that perspective that they they find deep understanding and real meaning you know in it and it is my great honor to be working with these amazing women and I find, I feel myself very, very lucky because I, I don't know that I have had, in, in, you know, in the way that people talk about having a mentor, mm -hmm. um, you know, as a younger person coming up, I never, I don't know, you know, there were people that influenced me, but not mm -hmm. in that formal sense right. that, you know, somebody like take you under their wing like that. I, I've, I've never really had that. And, um, and now... I, I think you know uh, this journey forward is is that mm. um, and uh, sitting down with Ingrid as I have done for many hours I realized that she's lived about 13 lives mm -hmm. in in that at least yeah <laughs> <laughs> the, 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 the sto like every fact. time I sit with Ingrid yeah. I, there's a story that I have never heard yeah an experience that she's had that is the most amazing and lightning thing that I never heard the last 500 hours that we've spent <laughs> together, you know, and, and when we spend time together, we talk. It's mm. not foolish, yeah. cheap talk. It's yeah. meaningful, deep, mm. searching conversations that we have that I leave feeling uh, enlightened, you know, inspired, challenged. Um, full. that yeah, full yes, mm. absolutely, mm. yeah. So so I am just I'm hoping that uh, mm. by my uh, entry into this foray, mm. that mm -hmm. it will be you know meaningfully enriched, and uh, the young people whose lives um, I will have the privilege of um, encountering. I I just trust that they will find it meaningful themselves and that they will grow you know from the experience I really I'm looking forward to it I'm, I'm very excited and very hopeful uh, more hopeful than I've been um, I know along the way that I have gotten um, uh, fatigued with with you know when you step out of um, the traditional ways of following a career path right it is really not an easy the, the system is not built to accommodate people that want to do really that. is it and so you find yourself pushing against mm -hmm. a wall sometimes always climbing uphill all you know that kind of so so it it, it can bear on you and make you exhausted mm -hmm. and, yeah and amaya and i have I been living like that for yeah yeah i understand i never yeah. went back to academe yeah, yeah. Uh, when i left yeah. um in 1996 yeah. i taught uh, 97 I taught at uh, the Pennsylvania State University at University Park. Of course, I, I taught dance mm -hmm. um, because I've been a dancer yeah. since I was four years old. And I was fortunate enough to have that mentor mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, in the person of Marion Durham Sujet mm -hmm. um, of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. So um, that was a, mm, a, a very rich experience. I was trained as a classical ballerina mm. um, initially, and Miss mm. Marion took me everywhere and did mm. everything with me. Everything. Oh, it was amazing. When she wanted to know how the children um, were being taught at the Balanchine School, um, she took me there because the, the faculty um, at my school said, well, we say take monkeys because she can do it. Mm -hmm. um, and so she took me every week on the train from Philadelphia to New York to the American Ballet Theater where I entered the, the studio and 
presented myself on the front line when we came away from the bar and they told me to get in the back and so I you know have to go to the back but then the next time they called my group I'd go right to the front just like I was taught because my teacher said don't let there be any heads between you and the teacher so I didn't understand why they kept sending me to the back because you know in my school I was always in the front <laughs> And she also arranged for me to have a private lessons with um, George Chaffee, who was one of her teachers. I mean, we did lecture demonstrations. I, you know, I danced on point when I was eight years old. I mean, all kinds of things preparing me to be a, a professional ballerina. Um, and so that, you know, so I had that, you know, energy, you know, to go on, even though my grandmother stopped me from dancing uh, mm. with Miss Suget um, just maybe two years before I was about to make my debut. Mm. But I continued to dance and, and later um, formed a dance school with a, a colleague of mine. She taught African and, uh, and jazz and I taught ballet and modern. And mm. I think we learned each other's styles just through osmosis, yeah. you know, walking down the hall, standing at the door of the studio. Um, I hadn't had any African dance classes, um, and they love to tell this story about when we first got together as young people, um, and we were forming, well, they kind of had an African dance company of sorts, you know, with some dancers and some drummers, and then I came uh, into, the, into the picture of having moved back to Philadelphia um, from Washington, D.C. area. And so they took me into the company. And, uh, you know, I was like, well, how am I going to be in this company? I don't know anything about African dance, you know. And, and we were doing this show that night. And they said, um, you know, so, okay, so we'll have solos at the end. And I was like, solos? He's like, yeah, you know, just come out and do a solo. I was like, well, but I don't know any African dance. What kind of solo? She's like, just get out there and do your virtuoso moves. <laughs> so when it was my turn, I did arabesques. I did triple pirouettes. I did grand jetés. <laughs> and then they were mad at me. 